Welcome to my CEH version 9 material. We're dealing with chapter 4, footprinting. This is always a fun chapter because uh, dealing with footprinting, we get to figure out uh, how the network layout is, uh, is about. How are the controls in place? Things of that nature. So part of this chapter, we have to talk about business losses, informational leakage, privacy lossage, or privacy loss, not so much lossage, but this privacy loss, and corporate espionage. And just espionage in general. So this is always a really fun chapter. So what is footprinting? Footprinting is the process of research and uncovering details about your target. Doesn't have to be network based, doesn't have to be physically based. It's just we try to under uh, we try to uncover, we try to do some research, we try to get information about our target. That way we can get more of a complete picture of their process. So the process of researching your target carefully, looking for any information that might be useful, looking at uncovering any detailed information, again, that's going to be useful. We're going to look for publicly available resources. Could be Secretary of, Web, uh, Secretary of State's uh, organizational website. It could be a flowchart or an organizational flowchart, things of that nature. We're looking for carelessness or thoughtlessness as it relates to shared information, such as social engineering sites. For example, we have a party on Friday. All management will be there. Well, you, what can you do with that? And that's part of what footprinting is. So what type of information are we looking for? If we're looking at the network scheme, we're looking for things like IP addresses, ranges, device information, other technical sources, uh, network diagrams, things of that nature. If we're looking for administrative information, we could be looking at uh, organizational structure, policies, procedures, hiring practices, some type of employee information, phone directories, uh, who's in charge of who, a general uh, organizational flow chart. If we're looking at physical details, we could be looking at things such as locational data, facility data, people details, or even just social interactions. Who uh, oversees who? What secretary talks to what secretary? Things of that nature. You'll be surprised what small details of information you can get may be able to be helpful long term. So how do we gather information? It could be passive. It could be just simply just talking to them. It could be uh, more of a direct approach, phone calls. There is this process called the open source intelligence, which consists of those sources such as like things like newspapers, websites, memos, press releases, things of that nature. That's going to be more publicly accessible info. So it just kind of depends on how in depth you want to go. You can examine a company's website. You could be trying to get some emails from them. So there's different techniques. Uh, you could pose trying to uh, get a tour of their facility, or uh, you're a magazine editor that wants to do a story on them. So again, it, it varies. It kind of just depends on what you're going for. Examining a website offline. So it's always a really big one. You can actually make a copy of the website, and you can use this to search uh, all the files that you have at your leisure. So there's a lot of downloadable website tools out there for you to clone them. A common one could be, what can Black Widow do? Uh, again, this is a uh, downloadable tool that's scriptable, that's a network spy, the snapshot of websites, it does scan filtering, it does a lot of things. You could also do things like with WGIT, uh, it stands for WebGIT. It's available for you know, almost any platform, it's non-interactive. It can work slow or unreliable networks, because it's a very slow, passive, just goes. So you can learn about subdomains, you can le uh, learn about children or link websites. Uh, you can le uh, learn about some hidden content. That's always a big one. 
you can learn about directories that are not normally accessible or viewable by the public. Uh, and on my website, I actually have several hidden uh, directories. That way, I use them internally, but unless you know that they exist, you don't have access to them. So you can also find old uh, versions of a website. So that's always a, a big thing, because again, you can always manipulate it. You can mine that for information. My favorite is you can always Google things. Google does a lot of web interactives. You can use uh, its search engine to provide quick access to information. Maybe not everything, but a lot. A lot of companies are doing more and more uh, item accessible to Google just because they want more recognition. Google hacking is used to retrieve information that's uh, hidden. Again, very common. When we get into website hacking, we're going to cover more about Google's hacking. But you can actually do things like a link colon and a website name, or website colon and a website name, or specific URL, or things of that nature. Because again, there's a lot that Google is pulling from that you can levy. It just again, depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Google also has what's called Google Alerts that are customizable, that are built to look for details that are useful. So there's a lot of things that you can do with Google. Another fun thing is, with this type of material, you can do searching for people. And there's a lot of people searching tools that are out there. If we're looking at photos, we can be looking at using detailed information about Google Earth and Google Maps and webcams to help determine location. That's always a big thing. We also have the ability to analyze social networking. That way we can gather additional information. Uh, again, we actually share a lot more information than we realize. Uh, <laughs> we can easily encounter information leakage. Us saying things that we don't really mean to say for everyone to see. And this information is easily collectible. There are so many popular networking sites out there, Tumblr, Google+, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, MySpace, Facebook, so many of them. And again, a lot of this, they're tracked via GPS data that are on our smartphones. So when you're starting to use these tools, your smartphone can tag them. Another fun one is, you could be looking at financial information. While this so much is not so much for private use, this is more for investigating organizations, but there is still a component here. You can use job sites like uh, LinkedIn or Indeed or QueerBuilder to again try to find employer and employee profiles. Maybe the what hardware and software uh, media that they're using. If they're in need of a new software engineer and they must know these key applications, it's a good bet that they're probably using those tools. Working with email as an information source, that's a huge thing because we can actually start targeting groups via email. We can start trying to fish them with email. Even just a simple who is and try to figure out who owns what domains or who are the appropriate uh, technical contacts and things of that nature. One of the last major things is the social engineering, which we have a chapter dedicated to this, but things like baiting and phishing and tailgating, these are all huge. And this is all part of just basic footprinting. How far can I go? How far can I get in before I get caught or before someone says anything? Or can I get all the way in? That's actually it for this chapter. I want to thank you.